Hi, this is Mark Kemper with EMFs. In this video today, we're going to talk about some of the different equipment we use for our 3D scanning and measurement services. Now, a lot of times people call us up, they've never had any scanning or inspection or maybe an alignment done before, and they have a lot of questions about how we do it, what uh, technologies we use, and things like that. So I thought I would go through some of the technology we use today, kind of explain what it is, what it's good for, you know, what it's not good for, and then how we determine what the right tools are. Because these are all tools, and they're all very good tools, but just like any tool, it's how you use it or what you use it for, what application. And a lot of that is dictated by the customer. Uh, for example, how large the parts are, what kind of accuracy uh, do they try to hold or want to hold, uh, what is the environment like, is it outside, uh, is it you know, highly reflective or transparent surfaces, you know, things like that. So usually again when someone calls in and they've never done this before or maybe just had very little of it done, we always try to you know, have a detailed conversation, we ask a lot of questions, so we can understand you know, what it is they're exactly they're trying to do, and then we can put together the right hardware and software uh, to, you know, to do the job and to do it well. So we'll walk through some of this technology and just, just a brief explanation of what it is and what it's good for. Um, all of this equipment here, you can go watch in-depth, detailed demos on our YouTube channel if you really want to learn how you know, some of the stuff uh, works. Okay? So, We'll break this up into a few different things, uh, but let's start with kind of part size. So, for example, if someone says, hey, I'm, I'm scanning or measuring some really, really small parts, and I'm talking about things that could be, you know, an eighth of an inch or smaller in size with very fine features, um, small medical implants, small surgical tools, uh, small little gears, you know, things like that. Uh, when somebody tells me that, Typically, it's going to be this system right here, okay? This is a Zeiss Comet blue structured light scanner. And what it does is it has interchangeable lenses and projectors on it, okay? And again, if you want to see demos and all this stuff, I encourage you to check out our channel. But we can go from an 800 millimeter field of view all the way down to a 45 milli millimeter field of view, and you're compressing five million points. So think of a, a 45 millimeter field of view, that's, you know, maybe a couple inches uh, versus 800 uh, field of view. So you're compressing all those points down. So when we're doing very tiny parts, we'll use that 45 millimeter field of view. And we're compressing those points down to about 16 micron point spacing. Okay, so we can get very, very fine detail uh, in a small area. So that'll allow us to pick up all the detail and, and features. So typically parts, let's say under a foot in size, that have a lot of features and a lot of details, this is one of our go-to scanners. And you can see here it's got a big stand so we can hold it steady and there's a rotary table. But with those small parts, most of the time customers are sending them to us. We can take this system out. It does have a tripod you can use it with but generally people will send us those parts uh, for those really, you know, really small types of parts. Now, when you start to get into bigger parts, that's where some of these other systems are very handy. And a lot of these are very portable, okay? This not so, it's not as portable, it's not as shop friendly. We really don't take it out in the field very often unless we absolutely have to. But now we've got a whole line of scanners here that are very portable, small case, uh, jump on an airplane, off we go, we can go scan stuff. It's also great to get into tight areas. So we've got a couple different laser-based scanners here. Again, these are completely handheld. You tether them to a computer and off you go. Uh, Laser-based are great for dark and shiny and really challenging surface types. Uh, very good accuracy. Some of these go down to less than a thousandth of an inch accuracy and that's an ISO certified accuracy. Um, we're not going to get into all that. We've got other vi videos on some of that, but for, for companies that have to ISO certify their stuff, they want to know how uh, this, uh, some of these scanners have been measured and to what standards, so that, that can be important. So these two are laser-based. This one's a blue laser. This one's a red laser. 
Um, and then we've got some what's called structured light scanners. Now, similar to this one, but obviously these are handheld as well. And these are great because they don't necessarily require positioning targets where these do. And those are the little stickers we stick on something or they're magnetic or there's other forms, which I'll show here in a minute. These can work without them as long as the, there's enough surface features for them. And then the other really nice thing about these two is they can capture color. So if you have color or texture, and that's important, there's actually an onboard color camera here uh, that if you turn it on, can grab color at the same time. So some people really like that. Um, so these are great for situations uh, where uh, maybe putting targets on is not ideal. They're also really fast, and maybe you want to get uh, color scanning. So, so these are great for that. This over here, uh, this system's a little bit different than um, these scanners here. It's still laser-based, and it has the, the laser system and cameras right on board, but you can see there's targets on this head itself. And that's because this system is tracked by this camera system. And what that allows us to do is scan medium to large size parts without having to target them up. Basically, this camera system tracks this head the head itself emits the laser beams and the onboard cameras pick up the surface shape. So this is a really nice system uh, to go out in a, like a shop floor environment because it also uses a thing called dynamic tracking or referencing. And what that'll uh, let you do is actually scan parts that may be moving around, noise, vibration, things like that. And you can move this camera system around. Now we've got it on a big heavy duty base here but when we go out to a shop floor or to a customer, we can put it on a tripod. The other really nice uh, uh, thing about this system is this is the scanner, but you can also do probing, okay? So you can see here, we've got a Renishaw type probe tip. We can put different extensions, different sizes on, angle adapters, and now we can go out, and again, with this camera system, we can probe, okay? Now, why would we want to probe? Well, probing, this is like a portable CMM, okay? And probing is very good for parts that are thin, for example, sheet metal, where you have holes and slots and edges. Scanners have a hard time picking up really thin features. With a probe, we can literally touch up to that feature, push a button and take a point. So it's great for thin stuff, and it's just great for prismatic stuff. Uh, a lot of holes, slots, maybe a scribe line, uh, prismatic surfaces, probing is great. It's super fast, it's easy. You just put it down, click the button, take your points, or you can literally hold the, the button down and drag along and get points. So many times we'll actually use these together. We'll do 3D scanning and 3D probing. And we can even use the probe with some of these other scanners. So this is a very flexible system right here um, to do both scanning and probing on kind of medium to large parts. Now, when we get into larger stuff, you know, once we get over 15, let's say 20 feet, we're gonna look at different systems. Over here, we have a laser tracker. Now, what is a laser tracker? It's sort of like the probing system, and it actually has a probing system, which I'll show you, but it actually uses what's called an SMR. And what this is, is a, 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 a sphere with a mirror. There's mirrors that convex in here, convect in here in the center, and what it does is this head tracks it in shape and moves it around and shoots a laser beam into here and then sends it back to this head right here. And so you set this down either on what's called a nest. So these are magnetic. You can drop it in there so it holds in position or you just, you just set it where you want to measure something. The head will track it and then you take a point. And usually there's a phone app you can do it or when it sees it's not moving for like one second, it'll take a point. Now the advantage of these systems is they are extremely accurate over very long distances. You can go out 100 meters or more and get really, really accurate measurements. Now it's only one point at a time, but this is great for doing alignments or just making things are square or level or distances. So anytime you're getting into you know, structural fabrication or ship buildings, uh, you know, ship building, uh, just large structural stuff, you'll see laser trackers used a lot um, because they wanna make sure things are a certain distance or level or parallel or perpendicular or holes are in the right locations. This tool is very, very good. 
and it does have a probing system. So similar uh, to this other system, uh, there's basically a built-in SMR in here, and this system actually has two different probes, so we can put different size and different length probe tips on here and basically use it um, to, to basically switch back and forth. So maybe we're doing some deeper holes and then some shallower holes. We can actually use this, uh, use both of these probe tips uh, back and forth. So you can do probing with this and basically the head is tracking a built-in SMR and there's some gyros and different things in here that can track its orientation and give you very accurate points, okay? Now, if we want to do large scale scanning, so again, this is one point at a time, very accurate, but if, what if you're trying to you know, scan like an airplane or a boat hull or you know, a, a large vehicle, a military vehicle or something, then you get into something like this. This is what's called a long range hemispherical scanner. And this is the most accurate way to 3D scan large objects. This particular uh, model here is the most accurate uh, product on the market to do scanning. And basically this thing spins around and shoots out points and, and scans everything in sight and it can do it 360 degrees, thus the name hemispherical. So um, we will do that. And both of these systems are line of sight. You would move them around as you need to scan. In fact, most scanners are line of sight. Uh, the only one really isn't is CT scanning, which we don't have here, but that's something else we can do where we can scan through a part and see inside of it. Um, but these are line of sight, they're very portable, you move them around, you take your scans or you take your measurements. And many times we actually use these two pieces of equipment together. So one of the other things that these systems and all, just about all scanners can use is these targets I mentioned earlier or reference uh, spheres. They, they come in different names, uh, positioning targets, etc. So for example, we mentioned this uses an SMR, um, but we can also tie that together with this system using these nests, using the SMR to basically track where these are and then drop these spheres in and 3D scan it and put this system together. So what it allows us to do is use a tracker to build a nest of very accurate points and then drop in those spheres and scan those with this system. So getting a little technical here, but the point is if we're doing something very large like an aircraft, we can tie multiple systems together to get very accurate results. Now, other types of targets you see here, we've got these little kind of geodomes that we use. You can see we've got different size targets. We have targets on a box. Um, we have them here on these small triangles. So depending on the system that we're using and, and the application, we may use a whole series of different targets, balls, SMRs, et cetera. And all of these, um, these scanning systems here will also take advantage of what's called photogrammetry. Now what photogrammetry is, is a camera system you see here, and it has a big field of view, and you go around and you take photos uh, from different angles all the way around the object you're scanning, and you would do this first. And you would do this in conjunction with scale bars like you see here, Okay, and they have a known distance from the factory and they have, you see here, um, we've got some different codes uh, uh, on here that it tracks, okay? So the, you have these very accurate uh, scale bars and then at the same time, you're gonna put down what's called coded targets um, and that's C-O-D-E, like a code. So every one of these targets has a different code on it that the camera and software system will recognize. So between the scale bars and these coded targets, um, what you're basically doing is taking dozens to hundreds of pictures all the way around the part, looking at the coded targets in each photo, looking at the scale bars, and usually you have a couple different scale bars in the field of view, and you move around, and what this does will build a very, very accurate kind of nest of, of this information so that when you do your 3D scanning, it's gonna be more accurate. So let me explain a little further. So most of these smaller handheld scanners, or really a lot of scanners, have what's called a stacking error. So if you were scanning a car and you start at the, you know, the front of the car, you know, in a local area, you'll have a, t a, a, a accuracy statement you know, up to a given point that, that you will see with these. But once you start getting f really far from that origin, 
you really start to you know stack up that error so by the time you get to the back of the car um, you know the error is going to be much higher than this accuracy statement um, you'll see because that's usually in a localized area so the error stacks and gets worse so to control that with this photogrammetry system where you're looking at a much larger area and you're looking at these these scale bars and coded targets we can kind of pre scan let's call it you're really taking photos the whole uh, vehicle and then feed that information into the software uh, to these scanners so that when they scan they can hold a tighter accuracy over distance okay we would only do this when you absolutely have to have the ultimate accuracy and you're doing something fairly large but you want a lot of detail and resolution because these smaller scanners can get a lot more resolution and detail than let's say some of the larger scanners um, because they're shooting out you know points over a very long distance so if you want a highly detailed highly accurate scan or measurement of something we might introduce this photogrammetry system and then use one of these systems with it so we can get the ultimate accuracy now speaking of accuracy how do we know this stuff is accurate right we get specs from the manufacturer we send them back annually to get calibrated but now we get out into the real world a hot environment or some kind of you know noisy vibration things going on how do we know when we get out in the field what our accuracy really is well many times we'll take with us scale bars and we have these uh, uh, or measurement bars I should say and we have these in different sizes and configurations but basically what this is is this is a sphere on both ends and there's also cones in here for probing we can take this out into the environment and we can scan the sphere or probe this little cone and measure it and what is on this bar is and this gets calibrated every year back at the factory it has the center point for these two spheres and the two cones so we can actually validate our accuracy out in the field and we have many of these so we can put them on different angles different orientations different lengths and we can validate our accuracy at least see what our accuracy is because all the specs are great but the real test is when you get out in the real world and you want to be able to take some some you know you want to be able to verify your accuracy is it good if we're measuring that bar and we're seeing things way out of whack then we can field calibrate our equipment maybe the equipment isn't up to temperature maybe the temperature has changed drastically maybe there's really a lot of vibration or something going on we can check for that with these these ball bars and validate so that's just a quick rundown of some of our equipment um, when you call us and talk to us about a project we're going to ask you a lot of questions about what you're trying to do the environment the accuracy uh, access to it you know all those types of things and again the reason we do that is so we can accurately quote it and we can bring the right tools uh, it doesn't do us much good to bring you know the wrong tool to a job because we didn't ask a lot of questions or we didn't really understand what you need um, and if we're not really sure sometimes we'll bring multiple pieces of equipment sometimes we end up using it all sometimes we don't but anyways this is just a, a brief overview of some of the technology hopefully it helps you again if you want to see detailed demos on any of this equipment we've got a you know great in-depth YouTube uh, channel videos and if you'd like to talk to us about a project you want quoted we're happy to have that conversation we'll ask you those questions and we'll determine what's the right tools based on your needs